I think hats are my favorite, so far anyway, my favorite device to sort of prompt a story. They are unnecessary things. So it's, if you are doing a story about theft or about um, something that's done wrong to you, if it was about food or money or something like that, it would be almost necessary. You could justify the crime somehow. But with hats, it's, no one needs a hat. You don't need one. And so it turns into a love story a little bit. The, the, the hat isn't, it's just something you want. It's just something you like. And you can't really explain why it is you like it or need it, but you're going to kill for it if it comes to it. Um, it's also great to have a visual ending on the stories. If someone says at the beginning of the book, I want my hat back, you know the ending of that book has to be him with wearing a hat, even if you don't know what the hat even looks like yet. He has to be wearing it. And so it's a visual ending on the story that for younger kids who ne aren't necessarily reading along, they need to see this character wearing a hat at the end. And so it makes for a very clear visual ending to the book. You know the book is over when this character is wearing a hat. I think that with fish, um, you're watching the eyes a lot because they can't move or do anything. And it's the same with turtles. They can walk around, but there's not a lot of posing you can do with a turtle to show if he's sad or happy or anything. With people, you have that range of motion, but with turtles, you have to, I think right away, you know you have to look at the eyes to know what it is they're thinking about. And so that helps me focus the viewer and it helps me focus um, very small children who might just want to look everywhere. You know, you're, if you want to know how this character is feeling and what he's thinking about, you look right at the eyes. And so both those things were chosen deliberately, but I think I like the idea of these guys moving very slowly through the book even. And with turtle or with fish you can sort of think that they're moving quickly and, and zipping through these weeds or whatever it is. But with turtles, I think you pretty much assume they are taking one step per page. And that's that's kind of why I chose them for this book. This book was done a little differently than the other ones. Um, I want my hat back, and this is not my hat, we're done with inks, like Chinese inks, um, that I would do all the pieces and parts with first and then assemble them later digitally and colorize them. For this book I wanted to try something a little different that suited the desert that we decided to do it in, and so it's done with uh, powdered graphite and water. The, the look is pretty close to the other books, I didn't want it to vary too much, but it's a bit dustier and it suits the desert a little bit more. And it's also got um, a bit of grain in it that suits the gradients that we end up using. The gradients themselves are digital, but they have some grain and they're not smooth gradients. And so everything together looks like just someone threw sand at the book a little bit, at least I hope so. That's the effect we're going for. I think if you make a book with a message in mind, I would get tripped up. I don't have one in mind at first. Um, and it finds it either in the writing or in the reading like a year later. I think that what I wanted from this book was to create a believable relationship between the two characters, which is something we haven't done in the other books. Um, for this one, I wanted a char two characters who legitimately like each other, and that's the crux of it, is that they don't, you don't want them to betray each other because they actually like each other, and that's where it, it, it turns. With the other ones, um, it's basically strangers eating each other. But with, with this book, the tension is in whether or not these two friends are going to split up or whether this is going to actually finally come between them. And you have to set that up. And so I think as long as the, the audience takes away some feeling of a relationship having been earned between the two characters, that's about as much as I can hope for. As far as a larger message, I've got no idea. <laughs> I don't know if I'm through with hats. I think I'd like to be through with them as a crux for the story, like as, as a starting point. I don't know if I'll ever be through with them completely. They're such useful objects in a story, for me anyway, as an illustrator and as a writer for some reason. They just, um, it's an object I have a crush on for some reason. And so I've, I've been trying to write sort of other material and every now and then a hat just creeps in. The second book in this series even, uh, This Is Not My Hat, started out as a story not about hats at all. I thought we should do something else. And then at the end of it, I realized I'd written another book about a hat. It's, it happens almost by accident. So I can say deliberately that, no, we probably won't do any more hat books. But chances are there'll probably be a bunch of other hat featured stories. But I think this is, these will be the last in this kind of set. I think the three of these books hang just well enough together that I'm, I'm happy with that. So there'll probably be hats in the other books, but it won't be hopefully the crux of it. <laughs> title is four words. If I had to describe it in three words, turtles are friends, I guess. 